Let's start part two by talking about the car crash. I told you we weren't done with this puppy yet. In part one, I mentioned how the birds all accepted the life of crime. Mel tells them that they can't just get away with getting away with everything, but he was wrong. And that's what the car crash was symbolic of, as it seems to represent what they were doing with this entire series, as it was just one big misdirection. Before, when the birds were innocent, they got into a car crash and lost a child. Now that they're all a bunch of criminals, they exit the car crash completely unharmed, foreshadowing that the worst people in the show be become virtually indestructible, while people who try to take their business legit and have some sense of morality end up dead, a direction that the fanbase was really happy with. Throughout the entire series, Marty and Wendy's marriage has been kind of on the rocks, to put it lightly. To put it not lightly, it's been a complete disaster. They've been going back and forth between saying they love each other to undermining each other completely, back to saying I love you to each other, and then saying that they're only staying together for the kids. But aside from that, they have a healthy marriage. Oh wait, oh, I forgot about the cartel. Never mind. It's an absolute shit show. But the point that I'm trying to make is that this show made us believe that their marital problems would escalate to the point where Wendy would kill Marty. Like here in season 3, when Wendy kills Marty, in that one dream of hers. In season 2, Jacob Snell asks Marty, What do you do, Morton, when the bride who took your breath away becomes the wife? It makes you hold your breath in terror. And at the beginning of this season, Omar tells Marty, Your greatest threat will always come from the inside, Marty. Never forget that. They're talking about other people, but we're supposed to think that what they're saying is foreshadowing that Wendy's gonna kill Marty. For anyone thinking that the birds had a happy ending, you're the definition of, what's the word? Uh, hold on, let me check. Oh, wrong. It didn't have this nicely wrapped up ending, because that's not the point. The entire show has laid down the groundwork for you to create the idea that things will go so far south for the birds in the future. Like, more south than the Ozarks, and I'm speaking metaphorically, of course. With the information that we've been presented, we can safely assume that Wendy will take Marty's life at some point, because things have changed drastically for the birds since the series began. We started the series with Marty having this reaction to someone getting shotgunned in front of him. Then the next time someone is about to get shotgunned in front of him, he's relaxed and smiling. Marty and Wendy both crossed that line of killing someone in season 2. Then, in the last half of the series, they've become the people they feared the most. When they were kids, Ben begged Wendy not to run away from home, and then he begged her to stay when she left for Chicago. Wendy's father claims that Ben worshipped her for a minute there, but Ben's opinion of Wendy didn't really change over time. Under Wendy's orders, Nelson was driving Ben to a remote location to kill him, but the only thing Ben was worried about was whether or not Wendy would be proud of how he's handling the situation. It's clear that Wendy has a similar hold over Marty. As a last resort, Marty tried taking Maya's offer of Marty serving some time and then working for the FBI, to which Maya responds in a very bitter way. Even if I gave two shits about you, you think Wendy would go for it? No more casino, husband with a record, wave goodbye to your big family foundation. And Ruth even questions Marty, asking this. Do you really think everything you do is to protect your family. Wendy made the right choice with not wanting to leave the Ozarks at the end of Season 2. In the Season 2 finale, Helen tells Wendy about the fact that she and Navarro doubted that the casino was going to work. My client even had us monitor your every move, your purchases, your browser history. He was convinced. And once it became clear that the casino was a loser, you'd have to make a run for it. In the episode before this, Marty was on his laptop trying to purchase one-way tickets going from Sunrise Beach to a location in Little Rock, Arkansas. Clearly the first step of the birds fleeing the country. This was Helen Loki telling Wendy not to make a run for it because the cartel already knows about their escape plan. But that doesn't justify Wendy's decision because the main motivation behind it was greed and selfishness and a bunch of other adjectives that have similar meaning. Wendy became became power hungry and subsequently reckless as she dragged her family with her. Marty may have gotten them into this situation, but Wendy was the one who was never going to let them leave. Which makes me sad, because Buddy made Wendy promise to him that once the casino was up and running, they would get the heck out of the Ozarks. He was less talking about the Ozarks and more talking about the cartel life. Buddy just wanted the best for them, but that never happened. With that said, I feel like it's important to quickly bring up Zeke. The way Wendy just gave up on Zeke revealed 
revealed a lot about her character. She admitted to making some really irresponsible decisions in the past that were solely based on her acting out of spite. She told Ben to stay because she wanted to make Marty angry. She involved her unstable brother in a very dangerous situation because she wanted to get back at her husband. Wendy's father later reveals that he wanted to take in Jonah and Charlotte, not because he believes that he can be a better parent, but because he wants Wendy to suffer. Damn, Nathan. I always thought the main reason Wendy wanted custody of Zeke was because she lost the chance of having a newborn after the accident. But rewatching the series, it almost appears as if she's doing this based on this animosity she holds towards Darlene, following in her father's footsteps to use a custody battle to get back at someone she doesn't like. Anyway, back to Wendy manipulating Marty and dragging everyone else into her conquest. Charlotte claims that Marty only went to Mexico to make Wendy happy, something that Marty doesn't deny. That's because Wendy has been manipulating Marty to go with her plans for, I don't know, this entire series. This in turn breaks Marty down and turns him into something more like Wendy. During the fight with the random civilian, Marty claims that he can make one phone call and have the guy killed. You know, the one thing Wendy did to Ruth's dad. This is something that Marty has held against Wendy this entire time. During their therapy session, Marty even brings this up and claims that he chose to stay with Wendy after she ordered the hit, judging her and calling her power hungry. At the end of season two, when Marty finds out about what Wendy did, Wendy tells Marty that she loves him. I love you. But Marty doesn't respond, so Wendy checks to see if he hurt her, and then Marty reluctantly replies that he loves her. I love you. In the season finale, Camilla orders the hit on Ruth, and Marty assures Wendy that Ruth's death won't be too much for him to bear. Then after Ruth is made not alive, Marty and Wendy arrive home where Marty tells Wendy that he loves her, and Wendy immediately says it back. I love you. I love you. This signifies that after all the fighting, poor communication, going behind each other's backs, and so on, Wendy and Marty are finally on the same page, as Marty was forced to conform to her way of thinking. In season 3, the birds sacrifice Ben, a member of the bird family. They, as in Wendy, does this understanding that it was the only way to make peace with Helen, aka the cartel, acting like Jacob Snell when he had to kill Ash, a member of his own family, in order to make peace with the cartel. In season 3, Wendy tries to create her own empire, but then she gets carried away and makes some poor decisions, leading to the point where she has to have her brother killed or Helen will kill her entire family. By the way, I am never going to get over the fact that Helen asks Nelson, You ever got the call about me? You let me know. And then Nelson responds, Yes. But then at the end of season three, Nelson is the one to pull the trigger and kill Helen. So that was pretty much a lie. Anyway, Wendy gives Nelson the okay to kill Ben, matching how Camilla gave the okay to have her brother killed in order to secure the Empire. Are you seeing the similarities? The evolution of Wendy's character from season 1 to season 4 indicates that she will grow into an even more corrupt and ruthless individual. If Wendy is already willing to sacrifice her brother under the right circumstances, who's to say she won't do the same to Marty? Wendy is far too power hungry to give up the position that she's in, so it's safe to assume that the scene where Darlene kills Jacob Snell is foreshadowing a future event with Marty and Wendy. Or, what happened to Darlene and Wyatt could also happen to the birds. The point is, any of these death scenarios can and eventually will happen to the birds at some point. Anyway, speaking of Darlene, Wyatt got married to Darlene, and when Darlene died, Wyatt was brought down with her. Because Wyatt dug his own grave when he decided to stay in a relationship that lacked any of the charm of something like a Harold and Maude, Ruth filed to be Wyatt's legal guardian, making her an heir. Darlene of their husband Jacob Snell is dead, and Ash is also dead, and Zeke was taken away by the state, leaving Darlene with no family, meaning there was no one to claim Darlene's estate, leaving Ruth to inherit the entirety of the Snell farm. But Ruth also died, meaning Three is next in line to inherit everything Ruth inherited. Ruth went into business with Claire and friends when they were looking to break up with the cartel, but then Wendy and Camilla had a slightly aggressive meeting with Claire about re-establishing their previous agreement, where Shaw Medical would use the cartel products, so what 3 inherited would not be in conflict with the cartel. 3 would also now have some pull with the casino, a casino that Ruth made legit. But other than that, I don't think 3 has to fear the cartel too much. I mean, theoretically, just to be safe, he could sell his inherited percentage of the casino and still walk away being the largest landowner in the Ozarks. Remember when I mentioned that Navarro had a priest on standby? So that he could constantly absolve him of all of his sins? And Wendy was using the foundation to justify all of her 
for wrongdoing? Well, Claire Shaw was doing the same. Claire took over the role as CEO of Shaw Medical Solutions after her brother was ousted from the company after publicly blaming drug users for the crisis regarding addiction to the products that they make. What a sentence that was. Claire publicly states that a whopping 8% of their research budget at Shaw Medical was going towards the next generation of medication to help victims of addiction, doing the bare minimum to fight addiction that their company is currently contributing to. All of these characters had to do a lot of bad in order to motivate them to do some good, while the only motivation that Mel needed to do the right thing was as simple as getting a signature. So I haven't really had time to reply to all the comments yet, but I've been reading all of them, and you guys are so nice. Like, thank you so much. I love Ozark, and I'm really sad that it's ending, but I'm really glad I get to make videos about it, and I'm really grateful that you guys appreciate them. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll potentially see you in part three. Do you want a part three? I can make a part three. I, I, I could keep going. Thank mm -hmm. you.